When you have a wire like this and put current through it, you will create a magnetic field around the wire. This magnetic field can be focused by coiling up the wire into many turns like this. Now to demonstrate this, I will put some current through this coil of wires to attract this screw. Now when I complete the circuit, the screw should be attracted to this electromagnet that we have created. So let's see what happens. As you can see, the screw was attracted to this turns of coils. And theoretically, if we time this correctly, we can give the screw a velocity and then disconnect the coil to keep it flying. Now, this is the principle of a coil gun. But the question is, what coil should we have to get the maximum possible velocity out of the coil? To answer this question, we have the equation for the magnetic field strength of a coil. It's proportional to the current through the coil and the number of turns. Now the first question is, how much coil should we have? If you have a large coil, you will have less current because there's more resistance, but you will also have more turns. Another question is how thick the coil should be. If you have a really thick coil, you will have very little resistance, which results in more current through it, but you will also have less turns because the coil is so thick so you can turn it less times. To see what kind of configuration of coil is better, we're gonna design an experiment testing how long the coil should be and how thick it should be. But first, let's design a holder to hold the whole setup. Here we have all the components needed for the setup. We have this large switch, which we're gonna use to control the start of the experiment. We have this micro switch, which will detect the projectile. We have this MOSFET. I will explain how this works later on. And then we have this holder. Then we have this inductor, which is basically enameled copper wires wound tightly around this piece of plastic and this will generate the magnetic field. And um, I can demonstrate how this all fits together. It fits together like this. The projectile goes in here. And in order to detect where the projectile is, we have this micro switch. It's gonna go in this little hole here. When the projectile is in the middle, the switch is gonna activate and let current through the coil, creating a magnetic field, which will accelerate the projectile towards the coil. But then when we're in the middle of the coil, we don't want this magnetic field because that would just make the projectile stick. So the micro switch deactivates and the coil is no longer energized. And so the projectile will fly out. Next, we have the battery, which is gonna power everything. This is 12 volts. It's an old drone battery. We have this normal red diode to see when the whole thing is on and these resistors. I have this circuit diagram here which explains how all the components will work together. So we have the battery, this battery right here. Then we have the MOSFET. It goes here, it has three pins, as you can see. One is the gate, one is the drain, and one is the source. And these are marked here with these letters. And basically how this works is, it works like a switch. The gate, is kind of like a capacitor. So when this capacitor gets charged, it's gonna let current flow from the source to the drain. And so the MOSFET is turned on. The reason for this resistor down here is to discharge the capacitor inside the gate in order to make this MOSFET turn off when these switches are no longer pressed. So these switches obviously are these two buttons that we talked about. And when both of them are pressed, then the MOSFET turns on. You can also see the small diode which we have up here uh, with the five kilo ohm resistor to indicate when the whole experiment is running lastly we have the inductor goes right up here and that's the the main thing that's powered when these switches are pressed all right so now we have the battery done The same thing with this inductor, two wires on it to make it more easily accessible. We got the switches done. We 
get the diode mounted on the MOSFET. This should be everything soldered. We're ready for a test shot and when I press the button it should come out. And nothing happens. I have fixed the issue. Let's see if it works now. The LED should turn on. And it worked. So before we start, I wanna note some changes that I made to the setup. Instead of using a MOSFET, I'm now using this relay to switch the power to the coils because the MOSFET kept breaking due to what I suspect is back EMF from the coil when the micro switch deactivated. So I'm using this relay, which has a mechanical switch in it instead. It still works the same. When I load the projectile and press the button, the LED lights up and it switches the power. To demonstrate back EMF, I've hooked up a diode in the opposite way of the battery current. So it normally shouldn't turn on. Now with the coil disconnected, and if I load the projector and try to fire, the firing diode lights, but this one does not. However, if I connect the coil and fire, we're gonna observe a back EMF, which is gonna light this diode. I hope you could see that. It lit for a short while, but maybe I can capture it in a slow motion. For the first experiment, I'm going to take this 0.5 millimeter copper wire and I'm going to use it to propel this projector. Now I'm going to see how fast the projector goes using the super slow motion mode on my camera by seeing how far it traveled in a certain amount of time. For each try, I'm going to slightly reduce the number of turns by cutting off some length from this wire. And I want to see whether it's better to have more turns or less turns. More turns would mean more magnetic field strength because there's more turns. But if you have less turns, you also have less wire, which means less resistance. So more current can go through the wire. Now the aim of this experiment is to see which property is most important in the end or whether they would cancel out altogether. Here you see the results of the first experiment where you can see that the velocity of the projectile hovers around 1.2 to 1.3 the whole time, except for when the length of the wire gets very short. But that is because the current that went through the wire burnt it up. For the second experiment, we're going to have the same setup as before, where we're going to measure the velocity of the projectile using the slow motion camera. But this time we have two 12 volt batteries in series resulting in 24 volts. This time we're going to see the difference in thickness of the coils. These coils range from a thickness of 0.1 millimeters in diameter all the way to one millimeter in diameter. And they all have the same mass, which is about 35 grams. Now the thicker coils have less resistance and will allow for more current, but they will also have less turns. The thinner coils have more turns and so they have more resistance and less current will flow through. The idea is to see which property will win out in the end. And so we're gonna try all of these different coils and see what the velocity of the projectile is. For the second experiment, we can see that the velocity of the projectile increased with the diameter of the wire. For wire diameters of 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters, the projectile did not move at all. The conclusions we can draw from the experiment is that you should have as thick a wire as possible while still keeping within the limits of what your power source can output. As for the size of the wire or the length thereof, you should balance the efficiency and the mass of the wire because velocity stays constant no matter how long the wire is. A longer wire would mean more efficiency since you're using less current, but a shorter wire would mean a lighter design and fewer material costs. So you should strike a balance between these factors.